my name is Megan and I'm here today with the art cart to talk to you all about how to make wind chimes. These wind chimes are inspired by Amy Cutler, an artist who has work at the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art right now. Amy Cutler's work has a lot to do with the idea of balance and balance is all about the ways that the different parts of your artwork relate to each other. This can include patterns, textures, colors, and lots of other visual elements. All right, let's get started. So if you picked your kit up from the art cart, you will have been given three pieces of string and a bag of beads. You also need to go find a stick and some materials on your nature walk, like small sticks, plants, and other things that you find. You will also need scissors, and it can be really helpful to have tape, but tape is not necessary. This is an example of one of my wind chimes that I made, and this one did not use many natural materials. On the other hand, this wind chime used none of the beads in the bag and was made from sticks and rocks that I found on my nature walk. The wind chime I will be making in this video uses a combination of both of these methods, and I recommend you try a little bit of both. Your first step is to go outside and look at all the trees you see and see if there are any interesting sticks that you can hang your wind chime from. Look for other things you can hang on your wind chime too. Are there plants? Are there flowers? Are there rocks? Look and see what you can find. Your very first step will be to take one of your colors of string and tie it to the end of your stick. You're going to want to let about 12 inches dangle over the edge. Make sure you ask an adult for help with this if you need, because knotting can get tricky. So in order to make your knot, you'll cross one of your strings over the other side of itself, and then pull the shorter string through the loop that you've made. You'll repeat this again to make a double knot. So cross one string over the other one, and then pull the shorter string through the loop. Then you'll move on to wrapping the string around your stick. So what you're trying do as you wrap the string is cover your stick with the beautiful color of your string. You don't want to go too far down your stick because you'll end up hanging four strings across your stick. So go about as wide as maybe one of your hands across the stick as you wrap it around. Your next step is going to be to cut the final bit of string that you have on the edge. So make sure you have at least 12 inches hanging off, probably a little bit more just because you can always cut more off, but it's a lot harder to add more string if you need to do that. And if you don't have scissors at home, you can just use up your whole spool of string while you do this. Now to make sure that your string stays in place on the stick, you're going to wrap it once around your finger and pull your string through to do a single knot. So just pull it through the hole that you've made and then make sure you pull it nice and tight so that it doesn't want to move around. Congratulations, you've got your first string on! Now you're going to be doing the exact same thing on the other side of your stick. Try to make sure your strings are pretty evenly spaced so that they'll hang well and you guys know the drill now. Make a double knot, wrap it around in circles around your stick, and then tie it in place with a single knot. And then you will have a total of four strings hanging down the edge of your stick, which is gonna look a little something like this. So now it's time to start beating. You're gonna wanna use about 15 beads per string. And you're also going to notice that you guys are gonna have a more assorted variety of beads than I have in my bag. Some of your beads might be a little bit too small to fit on this string. So if they don't fit on, just leave them behind and go on and work with some other ones. While you do this, you're going to want to think about the colors and patterns of your beads. How can you relate this back to the idea of balance that we talked about at the beginning? Something you might get frustrated with as you're working along is the way that the strings at the end of your string can fray a little bit as you go. An easy solution to this, if you have any tape, is to wrap some tape really tight around the edge of your string. You can also tie it in a knot if you don't have tape on hand. Now that you have a few beads on your string, it is a perfect time to start tying on some of the natural materials you found on your nature walk. 
I'm going to be tying this stick on with yet another double knot. You guys are going to be pros at double knots by the end of this. So you'll wrap the one string over the other string and then pull the string through the loop that you've made. And then you're going to make sure that you repeat that same process to make sure that your stick is double knotted onto your beaded string. And make sure you ask an adult for help if you need because like I said before, I know knotting can get really tricky. So now you're free to keep alternating beads, alternating natural materials you find, put whatever you want on your string until you get to the point where you feel like you're at the end of it. And then it is really important that you put a double knot there. Be careful as you're putting your double knot on because sometimes the beads like to slide around and they might want to slide off of your string. So, we have some large wooden beads inside of our bag. I'm going to be using one of those to put on the end of my string. And you're just going to be doing another double knot again. So cross your string over the top of itself and then pull the string through the loop that you've made, just like we've done all those other times, and just make sure that you do it twice. Otherwise, your beads are all going to come sliding off of there. All right, congratulations, you've made it to the end of your first string. You're doing really great. Now you will continue to repeat this process on all of the other strings you have. Keep putting on beads, keep tying on natural materials, and keep double knotting something at the end of your string so that your beads don't slide off. As you do this, make sure you're thinking about your colors. Think about your patterns, think about how everything's going to balance out at the end when you're done. Have fun! Now that you've finished beading, your next step is going to be to add a string across the top of your wind chime for your wind chime to hang from. Now you will take your final piece of string that you had in your bag, so your third color, and tie it in a double knot along one of the edges of your wind chime. Make sure that the end of the string has a little bit of extra string hanging from it because you're going to end up using that later. So now you will be wrapping your final string along the edge of your stick to add some more color there. And whenever you feel like you have enough color, you can tie it off to the remaining piece of string that came from your first knot that you put on here. Make sure you make another double knot so that it's sure to stay on, and then you'll be all set on this side of your wind chime. Now you will pull your string across the top of your wind chime and then tie it off on the right side of your wind chime. Make sure you leave plenty of extra string at the top for a loop that we are going to tie there later. Now you will tie another double knot on the right side of your stick. Make sure you take your whole bundle of string and pull it through the loop that you're making. And then repeat that again so that it becomes a double knot. Now you will wrap your string around your wind chime again, just like you did before, and then you can cut your string off and tie it with the string that's hanging from the center of your wind chime. Again, make sure to do another double knot so that it'll stay on there. So now you will take your string and pull it up towards the center. Make sure you find the center of it because this is what your wind chime will hang from. And then pull the string down under your string and then up to make a knot in the top of it. You'll repeat this one more time and make sure it's pulled nice and tight. You can even do it an extra time if you want to make sure that it isn't going to move around. All right, that was your very last step. Now all you have to do is go find a fun place to hang your wind chime. Congratulations and great job. I hope you guys enjoyed your projects and learned a little bit more about the idea of the visual element of balance in the process. Be sure to follow our social media to see what other fun things the art cart's gonna be up to this summer. Have a nice day.